The sun is setting and it's cooled down. So welcome to another fast paced review video. This one on the High Boy Ecom 14 electric scooter. It's a little bit different than say the Varla or the other scooters I've used because it has larger wheels and a basket on the back and a detachable seat. Well, let's tear in, see what it's all about. A first glance inside of the package and we can see that they've taken care to ensure that the components don't arrive damaged. This package is 59 pounds by the way, so she's uh, she's hefty. And here's a glance at everything included in the package. You got the charger, wheel, seat, rack, which be careful on this, it actually has a sticker that it's spring loaded, so when you remove this little latch it well, there you go. So be careful, I'll get your finger pinched in there. You got the owner's manual too. Now this unit's rated for a max range of 31 miles, which if you guys have seen any of my other e-transport videos, these usually come in around half of the advertised max range. Um, six foot two, 180 pounds. Well, anywhere between 175 and 185, depending on the week. Look who decided to walk over. We got the Gus man cruising through the yard, coming out for a pee, huh? He's mostly a inside of the house dog. Uh, but you're going to start with the assembly by folding the bars up. Nice tight action on that hinge. I like that. It's not it's not like sloppy or anything. So fold it fully up and then this should just go ahead. Let's see. You just I see. I was trying to push this pin down, but you leave it right in its spring-loaded location. And I see how the dog, neighbor's dog making noise. And since this is night, nice and tight like it should be, you simply push that in, that locks. Nice positive spring action lock on there. That bar is going nowhere. To release, pull up on this guy, pull out, and then fold down. So nice action on there, no slop. I'm now gonna remove the handlebar clamp to five millimeter head hex. And it does come with the tools that you need for assembly. So this looks like our five mil, we got some other stainless steel hardware in here for probably the rack I would assume. So you go ahead and spin each of these bolts off of there. And then pop the clamp off and then grab your bars. Make sure that your your wires are rounded properly you know they're not all twisted up or anything whatever kind of feels right and then put your clamp back on. You want to try to center this as best as possible and then I'm gonna leave these just kind of snug for now we'll do a final adjustment after we get everything assembled. Uh, you see there's a lot of slack in this cable right now so you're gonna release this little buckle and then we can slide our bars up too. Uh, oh look at that, it shows minimum insertion mark. You don't want to pull it any higher than that mark right there. You want to lock it out with that uh, not exposed. And since I'm pretty tall I'll bring it up to pretty much the max and then if you need to make this a little bit tighter simply undo the buckle spin this piece in right here a little bit you can snug that down a little bit if you felt like the buckle wasn't tight enough and that'll give you a little bit more clamping force now there's no need to worry about clocking this because you see it is keyed so it's just up and down on that and then you can grab this little guy split those apart and secure your cables to the bars like so i'm gonna go ahead and throw the front wheel on now spin these nuts off of the axle and finally have to take both sides off but i'll go ahead and do that anyway and slide your front axle out and the little plastic piece in there. Okay, this part might be best done with two people, but simply slide your drum brakes in, and then uh, you know, this thing's light enough where I can go ahead, pull up on the bars, and slide. Well, I'll show you here in a second. This is what it should look like nut, washer, washer, nut. And then on the drum brake, you have that pin lined up. It'd be better if you just put this up on a block of wood or something, probably uh, so you're not f f fiddling with it so much, but two people make that job a little bit easier. Then you go ahead and snug down the two 16 millimeter nuts. You could use the supplied wrench, but I'd recommend going to get yourself a heavier duty ratchet. I didn't see a torque spec on this, so you know, just go good and tight. Of course, you gotta hold both sides. And if you wanna be extra safe, go ahead and put some Loctite on that axle, but as you do snug it down, before you snug it fully, make sure you lift it, spin it, everything still spins free and it's not binding because uh, if say the spacer on the inside was the wrong size, you could crush the bearings. Good and tight. And she still spins free. On the seat pad, it's got three studs on the bottom of it. So simply drop that into place and then take your three 10 millimeter nuts, secure those. And with those tight to adjust your seat height, you simply loosen this Oh, maybe a half turn or one turn. Then you pull out on the knob 
and then you can slide this all the way up. It'll lock back out, and then you snug this down to lock your seat into place. If you want to remove the seat, well, geez, I guess you could pull this out and it comes all the way out. Or if you want to get rid of the seat altogether and just take advantage of this nice large platform, you have four bolts holding this whole post. So it is kind of universal. Put the seat back on, you drop her in, pull this out, slide it into the position that you want, and again, twist to lock, and now your seat's nice and secure. And the rack gets secured with eight three millimeter head hex stainless steel bolts. Uh, according to the pictures, it goes on this way. However, if you really wanted to bring her on a little, a little bit tighter, it would kind of hit the seat a scotch, but you could put it on this way if you wanted to you know, keep this shorter for putting it in your vehicle or something. But for now, I'll secure as the picture shows. With all eight bolts tightened, this is very secure on there. It's rated for 33 pound max load, but I feel like you could put a lot more. I really like the fact that you can fold it in on itself with ease, and once you, you fold it, you just simply secure that little hasp or whatever you want to call it, and you could put a big old box on here or whatever else you might need to transport on the Ecom 14. At this point, you can make your final seat, handlebar pole adjustments, and clock the handlebars where you want them, secure down these five millimeter nuts. Here's a look at the dash, a little cluster. We'll be turning that on later. I really like that it comes with a bell. I hate when some of these uh, electric bikes don't come with a factory bell. It's got the factory headlight and tail light. You got rear disc brakes that are cable driven and front drum brakes that are also cable driven. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and plug her in, let this battery fully charge up. I did go ahead and do a once over, you know, glance at this entire unit. I didn't find any damage at all, except for the only noticeable thing was this little bit of foam that kind of got melted onto here. I don't know if maybe the package got hot or, I'm not sure what happened there, but it's not a problem. Uh, overall, the build quality seems pretty tight and I'm excited to get her, get her cruising. I think this will make a, a nice little parts runner. Oh, and let's not forget to fill the tires. These show a rating on the sidewall of 35 to 45 PSI. I'm gonna go with 40, then you can always drop it down from there if you feel like it's riding a little too hard. No suspension on this thing. The charger this comes with has a rated output of 54.6 volts at two amps. You can see with the green light, that means it's in standby mode or fully charged, but it's not plugged in. So to plug it in, just come down here. Boom, and then this should go red. I'd imagine that's only gonna take an hour or so to charge up since this battery is not fully depleted, but with uh, a full charge on a depleted battery, they advertise uh, five to six hours charge time. And so yeah, we'll chime back tomorrow, go go for a good ride, probably a few last minute checks like a uh, brake adjustment. Yep, definitely gonna need one of those. We'll show you that and I'll uh, see you tomorrow. All right, next day we got the green light for go. I'm gonna unplug that charger and put the little dust cap into place since that's down on the bottom. I went ahead and did my brake adjustment on the front, super easy. You just uh, can spin this in for your adjustment and then make sure you don't spin her in too tight. You wanna yeah, lift it up and, and that the wheel still spins freely. However, you wanna have a nice, good, firm uh, grip here. Second adjustment is, is up top. And so you simply loosen that, that little lock nut and then you can get a micro adjustment. I recommend pointing this down, uh, that little, little groove, so that way if it rains or something, uh, the water's not kinda getting jammed in into the cable. Not that you should be riding it in the rain anyway, but a little light rain won't hurt it. I uh, got the same adjustment for the rear brakes, but again, your adjustment you're gonna wanna do down on the back. So you loosen this five millimeter bolt and then pull the cable through a little bit so it's uh, taut and that you have a nice tight cable. Then lift it, spin the wheel, make sure it's not binding or brakes dragging. The very last thing I'll say before you go ripping is it's not a bad idea to go over this entire unit and check every nut and bolt because I did find the, the uh, nuts on this brake cable were loose. Of course, that's another adjustment right there. Not that it would have been a big deal because the rear brakes were still good, but that was the only thing I found loose. So make sure you check all those nuts and bolts. Very brief tutorial on the controls to turn it on. You long press this button, it's gonna say hello. To select your gears, you only have technically four, I guess, right? So three is the fastest. Press down for two. One's going to be the slowest. I'll put the speeds right here on what the, those are good for. And then the fourth gear is zero, neutral. I actually like that it has a, a neutral. So you don't have to push to start on this. If you're in gear one and you start laying on, it, it's going to go. To turn your headlight and taillight on, you long press this button. There's a glance at the headlight and the taillight which blinks when you hit the brakes. To turn a light off, long press that again. And your brake light's still gonna work no matter what. This comes factory in kilometers an hour, so to change that, you long press uh, both the up and down shift. That'll bring you into the P menu. So the first one's uh, 
You see it's on three, that's screen brightness. You can go between one and three. Hit that again, and uh, so you see kilometers. I'll hit this top one that puts us in miles. And P3 and 4 are probably power settings. I didn't see anything about that in the manual, specifically what they do. I haven't tweaked with it yet. But P5 is your cruise control. So that means cruise control. I don't want cruise control. When you're done with those settings, just leave it be for about three seconds. And it automatically goes back to this screen. So in the middle, we have our current speed. Down below is the odometer. If you want to switch that, that is going to be your lapse time for your ride. Battery voltage. And then your trip miles down here. It says trip right there. I'll just leave that on odometer and let's go for a spin. You can ride it standing up or comfortably sitting down like this. That might look a little dorky at first, but I'm going to tell you right now, that's uh, a nice feature to have. Let's go for a range test now. Well, my first impressions are good. It gets up to the top speed at 22 miles an hour effortlessly. We're going to head down this nice, smooth, flat path and see what the range ends up being. We're indicating 22 miles an hour and on the GPS speed showing at 20 and 21. So that's pretty accurate. I don't advise anybody ever ride a scooter with one hand, especially over bumps. Let's see what this thing does. Wow, it's actually really good compared to the Varla. You could never do 20 mile an hour on the Varla with one hand. Well, I mean, you could, but it's way, way sketchier. Oh, uh, geez, we'll do a quick hill climb, see what it does. It's, it's not gonna make it up this really steep, rocky hill, but let's hit her. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. All right, so these, these bigger tires are awesome because I remember taking the Varla up the same hill and it just doesn't, it just doesn't roll over these, these big rocks. So, I mean, I'm kind of ruining the range test if we go all the way up. But this thing's also light enough to, to throw it around. It's, it's uh, I'm not trying to like trash the Varla. That's just my favorite scooter to date right now. I'm jumping all over the place here, guys. But let's do a quick acceleration test too so you can uh, see. Well, the one thing I noticed is it makes a little bit of a whining noise. None of my other scooters do that at all. They're all whisper quiet. Uh, so here, here's what that sounds like. Hopefully you can hear it. Full acceleration. It kind of, yeah, that's how long it took to get up to 22. And you just kind of hear that gear whine, almost like straight cut gears or something. I'm a little curious if we go down to speed one does it still have the same acceleration yeah it does but then the top speed's gonna and you know, we're gonna cap out at nine mile an hour and speed two same acceleration it's pretty pretty smooth off the line actually it's not aggressive or anything um, 16 mile an hour and then we'll go up to three and just hold this for a while and see what the range is that's uh, usually my biggest concern it's, you know i've been sitting this whole time but i <laughs> I didn't even think to stand up yet. Ah, oh, this is great having the seat. You can stand or sit. I mean, I'm starting to feel like all scooters should be created this way. See how she digs this turn at speed. Oh, the brakes are nice on this thing. Very responsive. I, I don't know why everybody hates on cable driven brakes. I feel like you almost have more feel with the cables and they're just, they're easier to fix in case something goes wrong is probably what I like most. What up guys? Uh, it's good to see kids with pedal bikes still. You know, me, lazy bones in my 30s. And it, this really does make you feel lazy. I feel like I'm riding a little rascal or something, but I'm not gonna lie, it's, 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 it's nice, it's pretty sweet. Just needs a cup holder on there, some, uh, some cold snacks, as Vice Grip Garage would say. <laughs> oh boy. Yo, know, this thing is like race car steering responsive. I mean, you, you nudge it and you're going. It's, it's actually glued pretty good to this trail too. I can't even imagine on the road how how uh, how well this would turn. It, it's also very stable too. I mean, you wiggle the bars and like, it's it's straightening itself right back out. So those those big wheels are really, I think that's, that's what's making a difference here compared to a, a, a small wheel scooter. You know what? I think I'm gonna try to turn the cruise control on. I'm gonna go in the P setting. I assume you have to stop for that, but let's find out. Nope, here I am in the P. I'm gonna go to P5. Hit cruise on, okay, and then I'll uh, go back to it. Right, I can't accelerate yet until it comes out of the P menu, and it's out, and I'm back on acceleration. Let's see how that cruise control works. Because my, my thumb's starting to get a little bit worn out. Usually they just beep at you after like 10 seconds, and it's in cruise. I well, I didn't hear a beep, but after about eight seconds, you see the little cruise symbol come on, and it's on cruise. Tap the brakes or hit the accelerator, and it comes off the cruise. Well, 
we're at eight miles now. We started at 0.7 and we're down to three bars. I did just reset this a mile ago and look at that, 0.99 miles on that my run. <laughs> so that means our odometer is accurate. Let's uh, keep on going. Wait till we're down to, I guess, two bars and then probably bang a UV. We're now at 11.6 true miles. Switched over to the trip instead of the odometer. And I think I'm gonna spin it around. I see three bars and maybe I had a brain fart earlier. There actually was five bars, it looks like. Yeah, I was reading the manual and it said four bars, each one equals 25%. But uh, anyway, we're gonna spin it around, see if it makes it home. But yeah, so far 11.6, running full power. And uh, I'm hoping on at least 20. That'll be pretty impressive if it does that. Let's, let's spin her back and uh, see if we can make it home. Hey, let me show you guys one more thing too. As I was crossing some traffic over there, if you don't have enough acceleration off the line, I mean, that's full acceleration, you just put your feet down like so. Hopefully this camera angle's okay. And you know, you can accelerate and kind of like run it at the same time and get her going. Uh, get her going into the traffic that you don't get hit, you know? At the 13 mile mark, we just dropped down to two bars. Just dropped down to one bar, 19.9 miles on the trip, and we are almost home. Uh, you see we're holding that 16 mile an hour. It's been slowly kind of losing power instead of that, that 22, but still holding a respectable 16. And only a half mile later, it's actually holding 12 mile an hour. Gonna make a quick stop. To grab some cold snacks for the demolition derby later. Let's see how this little rack basket works. Oh yeah. It's like a glove. Oh man, we rolled out of the store and now we have no bars. The battery's just flashing, showing 20.7 miles and yep, just doing four mile an hour. It's just gonna be a push on the last mile. Darn it. Well, guess I needed some exercise anyway, right? So now you can just either, you know, run along next to your scooter or you can sit in the seat and do the, the walking on the seat one foot at a time. Of course you could stand and push it like a scooter too to get home. Oh, and a mile later, ending our trip at 21.7 miles. We're averaging uh, six mile an hour. Look at the action on that kickstand. Real nice, works good. And it wasn't bad, you know, just pushing it. You could switch, switch over feet. It's one thing I like about scooters, bikes, skateboards, over say a one wheel, because then you're just holding, you know, lead weight if that thing goes dead. It, they weigh like 40 pounds or, well, I'm not sure what they weigh, but I would imagine 30, 40 pounds. Hey, some of you guys might see that 20 mile range and feel disappointed as it was advertised 31, but I'm actually pretty impressed with that because like I said, most I see are, are right around half and that was over half. So if you were riding it on setting one instead of three, or you were a little bit lighter than 180, then you know, say like 110 pounds or something in five foot, you're probably gonna get that 30 mile range out of it. Uh, can't pedal assist it like a bike. Overall, I am really impressed with it. And I guess we'll cap this video out tomorrow because I'm running a little bit late. So off to the demo derby we go. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in too. We'll see how long that takes. I should be home within six hours uh, to, to check on it. Boy, that demo derby was a fun time over at the West End Fair near Gilbert, Pennsylvania. Check them out if you ever want to have a good time. But when we got home last night, uh, this had the, the green light for being fully charged, and it was six and a half hours later. So probably took roughly five to six hours full for a full charge as they they showed i did go ahead and take the seat off to to show you guys what that would look like real simple you know you just take those four millimeter head bolts off I, actually i zipped these ones down a little bit too tight uh and and then you you take the bolts that were on there that are pretty long and you can zip those back in there you don't have to rep replace them with uh shorter bolts but i think i am going to leave the seat off for now because the, the one thing you really get with uh, a little bit more compact so when you fold these these bars down and you can go fully down and there is no bar lock on this so if you wanted to be able to uh you know carry it i guess the seat actually makes it easier for carrying but you'd have to grab it with two hands uh, so uh, i'm ready to close this video out and definitely a huge thumbs up on this scooter you can see the one downside with the big wheel is it's just not as compact as uh, say the varla is going to be able to to fold down and be a lot tighter 
the full suspension is really nice and if you're going on rougher terrain it, it makes a world of difference however the stability on the the stiff you know these are just they ride a lot more stiffer without the suspension and you can let go of the bar on one hand and and still be able to ride it you do that on the varla as i was saying earlier in the video it's because of the suspension it just gets super squirrely really easily and and if you grab these these bars up front i don't know if i'll be able to, to show you but you see how much play is in, in all this um like oh i got my earmuffs it's just a because of the way it's designed there's going to be a lot more slop and this one just to show you an example look how easy those like, bars are to fold up love that uh, you grab it see way way more rigid and um uh, so you really with the larger wheels I, I find you don't need this suspension and i'm just kind of rambling now but yeah i'll drop a link to this down below on uh, i think they have it on amazon or i'll drop a link to their website too and if there's anything else i think of i'll definitely try to update the description uh, with any other important specs like i think the max weight on it was uh 220 pound for the rider it had a 48 volt 10 amp hour, hour battery showed you the range tried to show you all tried to show you all the important stuff and and cover cover you know i know it was a lot of talking guys but it's not like a supposed to be a, a vlog fun video it's just supposed to to be my opinion i didn't show you to light it i haven't tried this at night time yet uh so but I, I think it looked pretty darn bright during the day i do really really like the big wheel so i'll leave it there any questions comments drop them down below thanks again so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video or learned something about it and until next time this is no nonsense no how see you in another one what you think gustav taking a nap out on the deck yeah good pups all righty <laughs>